You may have noticed I've neglected a certain variety of desktops so far in this series, the Qt desktops. So in this final week, I'll be taking a look at them, starting with the Lumina desktop. The Lumina uses the Qt 5 framework and runs on the Fluxbox window manager. It started out live in BSD, but has now been ported across to Linux, and it's available for most Linux distros. Unfortunately, I couldn't find one with Lumina as the default desktops, so I've ended up building it in Ubuntu using a third-party repository. Unfortunately, it didn't work particularly well in Debian, so I've opted for the Ubuntu route, and it may or may not explain a couple of oddities because I've built it up from scratch. Lumina is very basic and comes with uh, only a couple of applications built specifically for the desktop, but since it's cute, I've got the option of using all the applications that come with KDE, since they're based on the same framework, Qt. Well, starting with the memory usage, you can see we're using a minuscule 179 meg of RAM. Now one of the oddities I was going to talk about first was with the terminal, and I can't believe it, for the first time in this, using this desktop, which I've been using now for the past couple of days, it's working, I can move it around and I can resize it. Initially it was just stuck there in the top left hand side, so <laughs> first oddities cleared. Oh, how embarrassing. The layout of this desktop, we do have a transparent panel at the top of the screen, which contains the application launcher, has the time and battery information. This application launcher looks really simplified really, I'm not sure what's meant to go in this space here, I've never seen anything go in here yet. It does have a text searcher, so let's see how responsive it is. So let's try for Firefox, F-I, there we go. After a couple of characters, it has found it. So open a new window or just open the browser. That's strange that it's got some of these drop-down menus in the application launcher. Also within the application launcher, you can browse the file manager or just open up the full list of applications. You can click around and we can get the categories or just the full list. So yeah, it's a bit flexible there. Seems very cramped, but looks like we can resize it. Yes, we can. So can I resize it to get rid of, ah, yes, I could get rid of that pointless space there. So we can go and look at some of the preferences. That's not the full set though. And we've got the shutdown as well. Right clicking on the desktop also brings up a list of applications and we can launch a terminal from here. We should be able to launch a terminal from here. Now you notice all these icons around here and we have a second desktop here in like a widget. That sort of widget I've seen before on the KDE desktop. This is kind of like the default look of it. I have gone and removed some of the applications, which I did by right clicking and then removing item. There seems to be no way of highlighting loads of applications at once. Can I shift click on them? No. Control click? No. So removing them from this widget also seems to remove them from the desktop, making me wonder why we have both but I can remove the widget. Yes, it would be useful though to get rid of all those icons at once. So we can customize some aspects of the appearance. What's baffled me here though is I can't get the mouse cursors. I've installed both the oxygen and breeze cursor themes, but they don't appear in the list. They appear though as icon packs. They're not icon packs, they're cursors. So we can change the wallpaper. Yeah, that's gonna be standard. Customising the effects, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a, a different view for effects there, isn't it? Literally customising a text file. The window manager, a customised number of virtual desktops. New window placement, window theme. Um, let's try something different here, Ubuntu dark. Is that going to work? Ah, yes. So there's also some advanced settings you can change. Uh, again, like before, it's a, a text file you can edit. Customize the panel, so can I change the panel position? Yes, I can. Excellent. What's it look like on the side? Ah, oh, very nice, very nice. I can change the items we have in the panel. Can we do anything more? I suppose there's nothing much more particularly interesting to add there, is there? It's got all the components it needs. But I can add additional panels. Got a bit of flexibility here. Let's open up a couple of applications. So starting with a GNOME application. Well, that's rendered perfectly fine. You can drag it around the screen. You can resize to... Why has it gone to the right-hand side, though? <laughs> what? Uh, it's gone the other way around than it should do. It didn't do that to me while I was testing it. 
I have just resized the monitor. I don't know if that's had any effect. There's a cute application. You'll notice the inactive applications appear partially transparent. When you highlight an application to move it, yeah, no, you don't get the partial transparency there, which would be nice. If I double click on the application title bar, it rolls the application up. Right clicking on it gives you a menu and uh, you can set like the transparency here. Remember its position, send it to a different monitor. The default file manager we get on the system is called Insight. Got most of the features you'd expect out of a file manager, but got a couple of extras here. Got Git, where you can clone a repository. Let's try that. Yes, <laughs> brilliant. Has it got everything there? Yes, it has. Nice, very nice feature. It's not quite as feature rich as Dolphin. No split screen browsing, no opening up the terminal at the bottom of the screen. Although you can right click and open a terminal here. Should be able to. <laughs> I think because it's not set to the terminal correctly. An unusual problem I have here is I don't know how to get a network drive. I thought it would be as simple as typing the address in there, but it doesn't do anything. So anything in the menus that indicates I could go to a network drive? No, no, no. So I installed Dolphin on the system, thinking I must be able to get a network drive through here. We'll ignore the fact that Dolphin has not rendered correctly because it's missing the icons, even though it has the Breeze icon theme on here. So I try and go to network, and the network folder doesn't open. Why can't I get a network drive? I have never had that issue before. I suppose the only way I could have done it is to set up an NFS mount from my NAS, and mounted it into something like the slash MNT folder. Could have got to it that way. In the end though, I just thought, oh, bother this, so I can just download some files off my website to kind of show you what I need really. So opening up a file, so open with, got a couple of options here, but I want to set as Gwenview, set that as default. The Gwenview is a cute application, but I associate it more with KDE really, so I'm not going to look any further into the features of this. It's not specific to this desktop. I downloaded an audio file for the week of Linux news podcast from my website. So open, let's open that in something, yeah, VLC media player. Any multimedia integration? Nope. But we do get the VLC player showing up in the system controls. So yeah, can play, pause, rewind from here. Can I open up a private browsing session for Firefox? No. So I can't do anything that fancy from the application launcher. The Lumina desktop is certainly quite interesting. It's a good way of getting a KDE experience with much lower memory footprint. I'll be interested to see how LXQt rivals it in terms of the memory usage and responsiveness. Because certainly from what I've noticed from Lumina desktop, there's no issue with the responsiveness. It's very fast. So thanks for watching. See you all later.